it's Gucci time again. All right. So another way that you can get her on the record without knowing it is to create an email sequence. What you do is you send her an email titled parenting plan, uh, what we're going to do after the baby is born, something that represents the heading and title of a contract, um, you know, parenting plan, LOL, or something like this, what we're going to do when the baby's born, LOL. And what you do is you ask her one question at a time. So let's see who's going to pick up baby from daycare or who's going to do that. That's like a question. You know, I've just had some concerns. And I want to work this out. So, you know, we're working together. And the more friendly you are with this, the more lovey dovey, the more you you kind of hold her, the more open she'll be to this. And she'll just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because she thinks you got a hook in your mouth. She's reeling you in. So you ask the first question. Then you ask another question in a separate email. But you want to keep the email chain congruent. So 10, 15 questions. It doesn't really take that many to constitute the contract. So this is the thing. Contract doesn't have to be pages to pages. It just has to get the ideal across that we, you and the mother have an agreement to how this child is going to be raised. And then don't even get into the child support thing. You say something like this, like, OK, so what I'll do is if we have expenses like uh I'll buy diapers. I'll buy this when she's with me. Maybe I'll get you a little bit for you when she's with you. So on and so forth. Because even though you didn't mention money, you mentioned responsibility. You mentioned what you're going to do. So essentially, my contract with her was she was going to stay with me. There was no child support. Child support was never discussed. Child support was never on the table because I was am a YouTuber. And at the time, I was literally working four hours a day. So I had plenty of time and thank goodness that after she was born, her name's Madison, I went to her apartment and I was dad. You know, I wasn't just like playing Mr. Mom. I was dad. I was changing diapers, was doing all of this stuff. So from the moment that she was born until the moment that she left because her mother took her out of state, I was an active, caring parent. That's very, very important because one of the things that some of you guys are going to do is try to take this course and just abdicate responsibility. I feel that it is best for you and the child for you to be present, for you to be there. And that's what I was doing. And we we're developing this great little relationship. And she preferred me more than she preferred her mom because her mom was scared of her. Now, just to be fair to a mom, many new mothers freak out. Uh, they have a lot of insecurities. They don't know what they're doing. So it's a very scary and vulnerable period for them. And I was cool. And I would say, hey, you did the right thing, you know, because she was upset that she couldn't have a vaginal birth. She had to have a cesarean because her pelvis was too small. Just, you know, encouraging and stuff like this. And what was really sad was her mother convinced her to move back home to New York even when I was doing this. And the thing is, she didn't want to tell me that she was going to move and quote, I could see Madison on occasion. Now, here's one of the reasons that I'm doing this. To be a father means that you must be present. You must protect and you must provide. So I can't protect her. I can't be present, but I can provide. So I'm getting scraps of parenthood. I'm getting a lot of responsibility with none of the perks. So that's a, one of the ways that you can get her on the record and also have some ammunition, because essentially, if you have a conversation with her that's not recorded, it didn't happen, even if it did. 